Good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, kingdom greetings to you. Thank you for tuning in to today's Wednesday Bible study. I'm Wanka Mukhale and I am glad to have you to be with me one more time as we go through the Word of God and examine life-giving truths out of it. Let's begin with a prayer before we go any further. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this time. We ask for bread to be released out of this word. As we break bread, we pray that there will be life that we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if it is your first time or you have been watching but have not subscribed, please do so. I would love us to partner together with spreading the word of God. So you like, I mean you subscribe, like, share, okay? We have been dealing with the book of Hebrews until this far. And uh, I think this is where we will, uh, we will lay it down. This is where we will leave it with this, uh, this teaching for today. Uh, we have started from chapter 1. We are now in chapter 7. Chapter 7 begins with uh, Jesus Christ being uh, announced to be a priest or a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And then uh, he explains Melchizedek as being the one who met Abraham when he came from the slaughter of the kings. So we spoke about Melchizedek, that character in the scriptures, some of whom some people call him actually a Christophany. In other words, the manifestation of Christ before he was actually born. Whatever uh, we may believe uh, he, he was, in other words, whichever way we believe he came, he is a figure in scripture who who appears, you know, it appears like not much is said about him in the scriptures, but there is a lot of encrypted truths about Melchizedek in the scriptures. So we we spoke about that the last time, a little bit about it actually. Now we are in verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 7. And let, let's read it together. It says, Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not be called according to the order of Aaron? That was verse 11. Okay, let me read it to you. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, Therefore, if it had been possible to reach the goal through the system, I like that, the system of Kohanim or of priests derived from Levi, since in connection with it, the people were given the Torah. The Torah is the commandment. Okay? What need would there have been for another different kind of Kohen, Kohen or priest, the one spoken of as to be compared well with Malki Zedek and not to be compared with Aaron? So here the writer Allow me to say it was Paul because some of the, the theologians say it was Paul. So here Paul is saying if uh, perfection came through the line or the, the, the priesthood of Aaron, you know, or the Levitical priesthood, why was there any need for it or for us to have another priest who does not even come from the line of Aaron, but who comes 
who is to be compared with or who comes in the order of Melchizedek, which means that the priesthood of Aaron or the Levitical priesthood did not, was not able to bring uh, the people to the goal. It was not able to bring the people where they were supposed to be regarding their relationship with God. Because remember, this whole thing of priesthood, it had to do with how people or how Israel, uh, how the priesthood actually facilitated the relationship between the Israelites and God. If that goal was reached, then there would not have been any need for another priesthood to arise after the order of Melchizedek. Now, just to clear something that may be a problem to some, uh, some, of, us, some, some of us Christians or sons of God, this does not mean we are supposed to throw away the law and to throw away all the teachings that have got to do with the law and the commandments and, you know, uh, uh, the priesthood of Aaron. Because when you read in chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says that that law and commandment or the Old Testament, it was a shadow of things to come. So it means we do have to study it. We do have to read it. We do have to go through all the commandments and the precepts and the rituals because they are a shadow. Like it is said that the Old Testament is hidden. Uh, uh, the Old Testament is, uh, is revealed in the New and the New Testament is hidden in the Old so we do have to study it. Please, let's not have the mentality that, oh, okay, so it means we have to only study the New Testament or live by the New Testament only. No, that is not what he is saying. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 12. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change to the law. Meaning that if you move from one priesthood to another, it means the law has to change or had to change. How does the uh, complete Jewish Bible put it? Verse 12, it says, for if the system of Kohanim, of priests or priests, is transformed, there must of necessity occur a transformation of Torah or a transformation of the law. That was verse 12. 13. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe from which no man has, has officiated at the altar. Now this is very interesting. Let me read that verse and the one that follows. Verse 14. It says, for it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. Well, let's take it in the complete Jewish Bible. It says uh, 13 and 14. The one about whom these things are said belongs to another tribe from which no one ever served at the altar. What tribe is that? It's the tribe of Judah. If you read your Bible, you will never hear about uh, the priests coming from the tribe of Judah. And then in verse 14, he says in the uh, complete Jewish Bible, for everyone knows that our Lord arose, arose out of uh, Yehuda. And that Moshe or Moses said nothing about this tribe when he spoke about Kohanim or the priests. It sounds like somebody who is saying, hey guys, we have to look at this because 
this new priesthood that we are talking about now, you know, it, it, it is in no way related to the one that, we, we, that Moses spoke about. Moses said nothing, and he, he doesn't come from a tribe that, that used to serve in the priesthood. In fact, he came from a tribe of kings, a kingly tribe, okay? Let's continue reading. Uh, it says now in, in, in verse 15, and it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest, verse 16, who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. Can you see the two on the side of Levi, the Levitical priesthood, the priesthood after the order of Aaron? The Bible tells us it is a fleshly commandment that determined the priesthood. But on the side of Christ, it is power. The power of an endless life. In other words, the power of an eternal life. I would like you to hear verse uh, 16 in the complete Jewish Bible. This is what it says. It says, uh, one who became a Kohen not by virtue of a rule in the Torah concerning physical descent, but by virtue of the power of an indestructible life. The power of eternal life. The power of an indestructible life. That answers the question of why the priesthood had to change from one uh, family to the other. It came from uh, Levi to Judah. And it also answers the fact that uh, it was no more, uh, it, it, it really did, had nothing to do uh, on the one side with power. On this one side, it only had to do with where you were born. But on the other side, it had nothing to do with where you were born or in which family you were born. It had everything to do with the power of an endless life. That's why the law had to change. You can't use the same law from a priesthood that has got to do with which family you are born in in a priesthood that has got to do with the law or the power of an endless life. Can you see why all these changes had to happen where it concerns the priesthood? Verse 17, for he testified or he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of of Melchizedek. Now we get into another difference which gets mentioned in scripture. The priesthood of Aaron was temporary, right? Aaron died and then Eliezer came and all the other uh, 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 high priests, they came and went. But this one was an eternal priesthood. That, that's why there had to be such a drastic change between the two kinds of priesthood. Verse 18, for on the one hand there is an annulling or a cancellation of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Let me read it again. For on the one hand, there is an annulling or a cancellation of the former 
commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. It means that the priesthood that uh, was imperfect, the priesthood that came by the family uh, of Aaron, the priesthood that was based on descent, which family you were born in, it really did not have much impact as far as it concerned the goal of God. It was weak, it was unprofitable, because it was mostly based on physical things, on the flesh, physical descent. Okay? Unprofitableness for who? Unprofitableness for who? Unprofitableness for God and for those it was supposed to profit. They struggled to keep the law. That is why there was continuous you know, offerings. They struggled to keep the law. Let's continue reading and hear in verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. See what I'm saying? The law made nothing perfect. Let me quickly check something here. The law made nothing complete. That word uh, perfect is complete. Telios. Okay. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. Now, 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 look at what he is saying. He says the law, uh, the former commandment, which was cancelled, it was weak and uh, it was unprofitable. But on the other hand, he brings in a new hope. Right? He brings in a new hope by which through... What is the new hope? It is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. What is the new hope? It is the priesthood that comes through the power of an endless life. That is the new hope that Christ brought. And through that hope, because I want to repeat again, The law made no one perfect. But through the new hope, which is through Christ Jesus, we draw near to God. You see, that was the main aim. That's the main aim about the whole thing of the priesthood and the law. It is to draw man close to God. That's why I said it is unprofitable not only for God, but for for those who are attempting to draw near to God. And I have to repeat myself, it doesn't mean we kick the law out and we say, okay, because it was cancelled, we don't need to study it, we don't need to read. No, no, no. It is a beautiful picture, a beautiful shadow that is that foreshadows Christ. Okay? And then it continues to say now, we are at verse 20. We are at verse 20. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath. Following verse 21. For they have become priests without an oath. But he with an oath by him who said to him, The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. I hope you are noting these differences between the law of a fleshly commandment and, I mean, the, pres- the priesthood of a fleshly commandment and the priesthood that comes through the power of an endless life, okay? The power that draws us close to God. I hope you are are noting those differences uh, because here 
it brings another difference. This difference now is that these ones who came through a fleshly commandment, fleshly descent, they were made priests without an oath. God did not need to swear. You just needed to be born in a fleshly family. You just needed to be a part of the family of Aaron for you to be able uh, to be accepted as a priest or a Levite if you were from the other brothers of Aaron. But on this other side, that priesthood that comes through the power of an endless life, it had to come with an oath. It had to come with an oath. God had to swear. And remember, when you swear, we, we said in the last uh, 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 presentation, we said when you swear, men swear by one greater than them. Because without all contradiction, the greater is blessed, uh, blesses the lesser. So when you swear, you swear by one greater, but there was one there's none greater than God, so he had to swear by himself. Because when you swear, you say by. Even if you, it's not mentioned by whom you swear, but when you make an oath, make it, when you swear, you swear by some, uh, some greater being. But God saw by himself. He said, I swear by this oath, you are a priest after the order. A priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Remember, we are talking about ourselves because in that priesthood, there is us. You will see as we draw towards the close of today's teaching. Verse 22, then it says, By so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Now, again I say, if you consider all those differences that I have been pointing out, it becomes now clear what the scripture means. That Jesus became a surety of a better covenant because it's a better hope by which we can approach God. And then when, when it says he is the surety, it means he is a guarantee. He is a guarantee of a better covenant. Let me just read to you what uh, a guarantee or a guarantor is. It is an assurance for the fulfillment of a condition. First, it's an agreement by which one person undertakes to secure another in the possession or in enjoyment of something or an assurance of the quality of the length of the use to be expected from a product offered for sale, often with a promise of reimbursement. So, it's, it's assurance, assurance that this thing, there is no way it can change. This thing, there is no way it cannot happen the way I am promising. This thing, there's no way, there is no door open, not even the slightest, no door open for it to be any more different than what I say it is. It is guaranteed. Jesus is the guarantee. He's the one who now is the guarantee. Oh, you know that when you buy any product, you get a small book uh, and it's written guarantee. And then you go through the pages and it tells you what guarantee, what is guaranteed about the project, how long it is going to last, how much it is going to be able to do for you, what it is going to be able to do for you. They, 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 when you buy a car, they give you a five-year guarantee uh, so that if anything happens, they'll take care of it. Five years or 100,000 uh, kilometers, uh, whichever comes first. So Jesus Christ is the surety. He is the guarantee 
of this better covenant, that this covenant truly will bring us close to God and all the promises that go with it. God will make sure they come to pass for us. And now he continues to say, as we begin to round it up for today. Verse 23. Also, there were many priests because they were presented by death from, con- prevented by death from continuing. You see what I said? That the priests who are after Uh, the fleshly commandment, who come through the fleshly commandment. They were human. It means this whole side, it it was human, it was weak, it was temporary, it was unprofitable because priests came and died. Okay? Uh, Verse, okay, and... uh, uh, Let me just see where I I am. Uh, uh, Okay, verse 24. Okay, but he, because he continues forever, remember the oath is you are a priest forever, he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. So on the side of the fleshly commandment, it's changeable. On the side of the power of an endless life, it is endless, just like the life that makes it possible. But he, because he continues forever has an unchangeable priesthood therefore that's verse 25 that's how verse 25 starts it says therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them do you see that through all those differences. That is why this one that comes through an endless life, that comes through in the order of Melchizedek, that uh, is not connected to family descent, but connected to the power of an, uh, an everlasting life. Jesus Christ being the guarantor thereof. That is why being a priest forever, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. What is to save? It is to forgive, it is to deliver, it is to heal, it is to protect, it is to preserve, it is to prosper. It is those things that we need for us to have a life or to live life and godliness here on earth or to uh, 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 to get the power that gives us life and godliness here on earth. So once you begin to see those differences, then you are going to understand that if Jesus can save me or can save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, then You cannot be a religious person. You cannot approach your walk with God religiously. You have to approach it relationally. You have to relate with God. This is where your everything will come from. You know, sometimes I sit here and look at everything I have. When I was the age of 27, And I got into the ministry and started ministry at the age of 27. Everything I have today, to date, it has come because of my service to God, because of my relationship with God. And a lot or everything you have has come through that too. He is able to save us to the uttermost. It doesn't matter what happens in your life. He is able to save you get you out of it, deliver you from it. So let me read the rest of the verses in chapter 7, and that will be it with the book of 
Hebrews. I'm just going to read them without explaining, okay? This is what it says in verse 26. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Well, I just have to say, he is fitting for us, for you and me, he is the right one. Verse uh, 27, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints as high priests men who have weaknesses, but the word of oaths which came after the law appoints the Son who has been perfected forever. That's powerful. I'm telling you, that's life changing. I hope you got something out of these teachings from the book of Hebrews. Uh, that is it for today. We will talk again next week, Wednesday. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you throughout the day and week. Shalom. <music>